Hey, Steven. Howdy. Hey, Nick. Hello. I'm so excited. Do you want to know why? Why is that? Because we're going to see some Tenant Institute, finally. Oh, boy. Tenant Institute is pretty awesome. It, it is <laughs> awesome. It's, it's great. Um, I'm really excited for this game, actually, because um, I heard good things about this deck. Uh, Tenant Institute has some, like, pseudo-fast advance. Like, you can kind of... It's like sort of fast advance, you know, two fours. Um, if you can trigger the ability. Nick, you know why I'm excited about this deck? Off the grid? It has off the grid. It no! <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, uh, boo. <laughs> also, uh, Workshop Noise. Huh. Haven't seen that for a while. It's making a comeback? It's... I mean, uh, oh, uh, I should introduce everybody. On the left, uh, this is Jeff. Jeff was a uh, player who showed up for the first time at our group meeting on Wednesday, uh, October 8th. And um, on the right, that's Nick. That's you, Nick. Yay, it's me. And uh, unfortunately, we couldn't see what uh, Jeff just accessed from R&D, but it wasn't very important, so he put it back. Right. I've got pretty low agenda density in this deck. And yeah, so you okay. ran on up. Got a lot of taxi nice. Um, not that many end the runs. Um, the whole idea is to make them spend all their money trying to get in and then capitalize it on that with a nice, strong HQ. Nice. And so then, are you planning on triggering the tenant ability that often? Um, it's nice when it triggers. Um, I'm not running any trick of light in the deck. And mostly because with Chrisium Grid and Off the Grid, I don't have the deck space for Trick of Light anymore. Same. So, so it is very much a one-trick pony, which can be a problem if I don't draw that one trick. Hmm. So then, like, why play Tenon at that point? Like, um, well, you'll, you'll see Tenon is going to get me a lot of free advancements. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time advancing cards once they're on the table. And it also helps my ice walls just get bigger and bigger until my ice walls themselves are pretty good at ending runs. So is there any other Jinteki ID that this could work with? I mean, why not replicating perfection, for instance? Or Nisei division. Or, no. <laughs> ah, ah, Nisei. Um, Nisei would be good, though. You could, like, you know, caprice money and... Right. It's, it's and it, it makes Snowflake pretty good. Um, Nisei, Nisei might work pretty well with it. Um, replicating perfection be fine i think but you're not going to get any synergy with the um the uh, id ability and with off the grid since they'll be making runs on your hq which is essential server anyway i guess that's true um i, I guess though if you could have it unresed and then they'd have to make the the run on one of the central servers and then you can res it suspecting <laughs> that they're going to go for it that's true, and actually, Chrisium Grid, or no, they don't. Need, it doesn't need to be a successful run for um, Replicant Perfection to trigger. Yeah, Never. right. So they could like spend a, they could waste a click running archives, and then try to go for the remote. But you res the remote, and it's a uh, off the grid, and then yeah. all of a sudden they're like, "Well, crap! I gotta go for HQ now." You know, that's that's not bad. So, so far, it's the early game. I haven't really kept them out much. I've gotten one tenant token. And I think the biggest obstacle with this deck is economy, actually. Okay. Um, because I'm tenant, I've got to run pretty much all Operation Economy. And all that Jinteki has in Faction are Celebrity Gift and Medical... Um, what is it? Medical fund Fundraiser? Medical fund Research raiser. Fundraiser. Yay! Yeah, research. So I'm actually running the the research fundraiser. I've got three copies. Um, I just I just threw one out there. It's it's a hard sell giving the runner money, but if the whole if the whole aim of the deck is to drain that money, it's not too bad for a one shot. Mm -hmm. um, give them give them a little boost and then take it away as fast as I possibly can. So uh, what's Jeff doing over here? He, I see I see a corroder. I see a data sucker. Pretty standard anarch stuff. Uh, Corona not so standard in noise nowadays, though. Right. 
and and he he made a pretty brave run, and he faith checked into a Kamainu, and that seems to have hurt him quite a bit. It does hurt. That's his whole yeah. hand in the uh, in the trash there. Um, Oof. So, but it also means that he's right now he's getting into HQ for just one credit. As long as he keeps no cards in his hand, pretty risky against Jinteki, but yeah, I'm, not running, I'm not running any shock or feel or anything to punish him, so it's paying off for him. But yeah, against any other, I mean, even just against Ten, and I would be really, really wary. Ten intends to run shock and Shikyu because um, they can throw him in archives, and they don't have to worry about icing up archives anymore. Mm. So it's pretty brazen to keep making those runs. But I've got no, I've got nothing to punish it in my deck. No, do you have anything to to recur your off the grids? I do. I, I have three copies of interns. Um, no Jackson. I'd, all my influence is used up in off the grid, Chrissium, and Ice Wall. <laughs> so interns is my only defense. Um, I might even use it at one point in this game to install an agenda <laughs> out of archives. I don't remember. I might not. I might just barely have few enough agendas in archives that that wasn't an issue. Huh. So I, I saw him run through the Kamainu, through the Ice Wall with the Corroder, and trash your Chrissium Grid. So, right. But he's kind of worried then, now, right? And that, and that cost him a lot of money. That's I mean, Chrissium Grid, it's five to trash. It's not cheap. I um, yeah, I think, I think I rezzed it so he wouldn't get a data sucker and so he wouldn't be tempted to um, bump up his nerve agent. Because I've actually got a few agendas in hand at the moment. Um, I think I've got a brain trust. Yep, looks like it. Yeah. NAPD. So, so are you trying to like over-advance the brain trust at all, or is, do you just play it as a 2-3? No, it, it's just a 3-2. Um, I've, I've, played one game, I've played one game ever where I over-advanced the brain trust, and it didn't even really seem to pay off. Like, <laughs> it's just the least appealing over-advanced card, I think, in in that runner. Yeah, until we get more <laughs> cards that are like more interesting when they get like like they derez, like if we have more cell portal cards. Hey, you know that could be pretty cool. Um an over advanced brain trust and cell portal, but that's that's it's pretty expensive anyway, just that that requires the runner just not being able to get into your brain trust because it's gonna be, it's pretty hard to over advance. Yeah to five. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's just for a one reduced res cost rice. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of looks like Jeff's in a bit of a pickle right now. Um, he's hit his MU limit, though yeah. he can go back into HQ. Um, runs into if he runs into a Caprice Nise, that's not going to be so good, though. No. I, I I got pretty lucky. It took him a long time to get to his uh, grimoire in this game. And that was that was good for me. Um, he just seems it, short on breakers. Like needs yeah, that mimic. It's yeah. <laughs> so uh, how how do you feel about uh, a workshop noise in the current meta? It's cool, but like noise has cash now, and that solves the economy problem of like the piracy deck. Mm -hmm. So, you, so you think that that's that's what he was trying to do with Workshop before? Like that's why people ran it. I get solved that I get money essentially, uh, get a drip money every turn. Well, it gets the drip, and then you can do those crazy turns where you um, uh, stim hack, and then you just like vomit out like five viruses for free, essentially for one right. brain damage. But it just. Right now, noise with pawn shop it just seems so much more consistent. He doesn't have to make a yeah. big play. Every turn is just a pretty significant uh, push towards milling milling cards into the archives. And workshop is four influence, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. I believe so. Like so, to have three of them, that is twelve influence. So like, you're stuck with then like maybe cash. Mm -hmm. I think I see a cash in his hand, actually. So, yeah. Uh, it's not terrible. It's an, it's an old school way to play. It's, it's a kind of a couple of seasons ago, but not, not terrible. Yeah. Oh, God. What just happened? 
Oh, I um, celebrity, celebrity gift. gift. Showed up my hand. I've got the off the grid. I've got the Chrisium. Um, <laughs> a couple of agendas in there. Um, was there a piece of ice? I, I couldn't quite tell. I, kind of looked I don't think so. No. NEPD, Brain Trust, and, oh, oh, and, and, and an interns. So those are the five cards. Off the grid, Chrisium, interns, Brain Trust, NEPD, and uh, the other thing I said. So now looking at this game, uh, having played it, Nick, what would you have done differently running-wise with the tools that, that Jeff had at his disposal up to now? Um, I might not have been so quick to get out of that nerve agent. I didn't really see what was in his hand before. Um, but it just seems like as an early virus, it's not that strong. Um, and the, the biggest thing right now, his, his deck, it kind of seems disjointed. Like, it seems like he's wanting to make runs. But at the same time, he's also trying to install viruses, and there's not much cohesion. So he does get out of the wild side now. Um, so he is drawing a lot of cards, but his economy is pretty bad. So he's only got three credits left. He's got a cash about to come out. He, um, What's... Oh, did he only have three credits? He couldn't. He only get had three it. credits, so he ran into an NAPD. Oh, he could, not, he could have could imped not it. Score. He should have imped it. Um, I yeah, feel no, like that true. Probably, yeah, that probably would have been a smart play. He might be saving his imp for Chrisium Grid. Right. Yeah. Um, given that he has so little economy, that five credit trash cost is pretty huge. Pretty huge right now. Um. You know what I see though? Uh, even though. Uh, I mean, this is sort of a, a you know, new deck archetype that you're kind of working with here. Well, an old deck archetype with some new cards, let's face it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I kind of see I kind of see it coming together a little bit more. Like, Tenon starts to seem like you kind of get what it's doing a little bit more with Crecium Grid and Off the Grid. Like, it doesn't have to fast advance if it doesn't want to. Although, uh, if I had my way, I'd probably still have Trick of Light in there. No doubt. <laughs> it's, it's just too good not to. It, it, it was a tough card not to include. Um, but we're, we're going to see right here. I'm not going to advance that NAPD for a while. I'm just going to let it build up tenant tokens. And that gives me free reign to keep on icing up my servers, building up my economy, and keeping everything protected. Sure. Which is pretty important. Um, so the, the tenant ability isn't essential to the deck it's just it's really nice it's essentially it saves you two clicks click for credit and click to advance um, now are you also playing nisei mark ii in there uh no i am playing two brain trust and a philotic it's just easy to score three twos um three napd and three future perfect so my agendas are really are pretty hard to steal out of R D, out of hq um and that was intentional because odds are the runner is still going to be getting accesses. Um, I'm not looking to keep them out permanently. I'm just trying to make it expensive for them to get in. Hmm. It did look like he just milled one of your future perfects. Or not milled, but uh, I'm sorry. He used his imp uh, on the future perfect. Um, oh, can you uh, imp away future perfect? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, it's ability you don't score, but you still access it normally. So you can... Oh. That's think. pretty good. Yeah. No, yeah. can you can you imp it after you do the side game? You can. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Um. There's. I, I'm pretty sure the uh, future perfect ability triggers right when you access it, and then you still access it as normally, so you can still interact with it. You can still imp it afterwards. Interesting. Hmm. I have never considered that. Oh, man. Like watching this noise deck is like, man, it just needs ASOPs. It's better with ASOPs. <laughs> yeah, money, m money is the big problem. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how this deck would handle a modern noise. Because yeah, he just hit MU limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think perhaps uh, Jeff was trying to combat the uh, current stream of nothing but noise that we see in Seattle. So. Maybe, because I, I know that he plays at uh, uh, Raygun Lounge in Capitol Hill, and uh, there's a lot of noise over there. Yeah. And uh, maybe he's just putting it together to just, you know, mix things up a little bit. 
Um, he was he was actually a pretty strong player. Um, I watched him a couple times over the night, and he, he seemed to know what he was doing. So maybe he was just uh, a bit unlucky um, at this game or something. But uh, there goes the stim hack. There's the stim hack. Yeah, there you go. Pretty sure he's running into yeah, running into HQ. Oh man, that is so brutal. Uh, you have to <laughs> either either beat this side uh, game. Or you're taking a brain damage and going home with nothing. Uh, That's pretty brutal. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he, you know, if he doesn't stim hack, he, he can get in, and he can probably cr- trash the priest, but he won't be able to trash the Christian grid. Uh, with stim hack uh, money, he should be able to. With yeah, stim hack money, he can. But if he if he hadn't stim hack, he just made a normal run. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It would have cost him too much. He can use the stim hack money to do the side game. So that's. It's yeah. not all lost yet, so. Uh, so Caprice ends the run. Does he have to, like, if he were to, you know, use the money from Stim Hack on that last Parasite, would he have to do it right then? He, he would have had to do it before the, the Psy game. Uh, okay. Just, yeah, Caprice is, once Psy game is over, the run is, the run is either, yeah. either yeah. successful or it ends. Well, it doesn't, well, the run either continues or it ends, but. Um, no, really that's, no, that's right. Penguin. Why did he bid zero? I always wonder why did he bid zero. Um, zero, it's often strong. It's a lot of times like, if a corpse trying to bluff. I always but, b- bid zero every side game. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then usually, if if not, you're in stim hack. You don't lose anything besides what, you cost, what it costs you to get in. And so if you can get in multiple times, especially for cheap, you're, you're really taxing the uh, the corp. And then also, if the corp is trying to bluff, if you expect them to spend money, and maybe they're trying to sneak in a uh, low bid. Side, side games are tricky. I think zero is probably one of the most consistently successful bids. Mm-hmm. In, um, cause, I don't know. I just pretend that uh, the corp is just a random number generator. So it's like, well, if I bid zero, like one third of the time, I'll just win. And I think the other thing is pe- pe- that people forget about when they're thinking about side games is it's not free. It, it costs money unless you bid zero. Yeah. And any time you spend money, it's not it's not inconsequential in this game. So I believe I double advanced a brain trust that had one tenant token on it. So I guess I'm running into economy issues. That was the biggest problem I kind of considered going into this. Have you thought um, about? I mean, I guess it's not so great, but uh, you, could you, you probably couldn't fit any uh, ice that gives you cash, like Caduceus, or you probably don't want to run pop shadow. Up windows. Pop up windows would be great. It, Seems like. It's all a problem of influence. Um, hmm. I mean, maybe shadow, but I think ice wall is is the better choice in general. So, what's the play here, Stephen? What would you do as a noise player? Well, it, let's say you're 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 kind of up a creek. You got a brain damage. You one credit. You got a grimoire. Uh, he did pull a grimoire, and he did deja vu the medium back into hand. Okay. I I, I think that's what he did. I. I'd have to go back. <laughs> I believe he it's got like, a cash and a medium, yeah. Yeah, I think switching gears and just trying to get into R and B. At this point, that seems strongest. Um and he can actually with personal workshop, he can actually parasite him at Zubaco and data input it data search on before I can return it to my hand. Yeah. I think uh Himitsubaku is fine because it's one credit. Like, blowing up the pup would be better, just because you'll be yeah. saving money in the long run. Yeah, that, that's true. I think eventually he does blow up the pup, but he spends a lot of turns spending money on it. Is that another future perfect? I just saw him mill off the top. I think so. I think I think at some point in the near future, I think I've got an NAPD down. Once I score that out, I'm pretty sure I'm going to intern one of those future perfects onto that off the grid. Seems like a pretty solid play. Um, yeah. If I were him, I'd be trying to get into archives as fast as possible. He's, yeah, he's like I think a good play would be to like build up some virus tokens onto the data sucker and then just run straight into archives because, like, worst case you res two pieces of ice, but you can parasite them away. Let's talk about your your ice makeup. It looks like you've got probably three pups, right? One or two Mitsubakos. Um, I've, actually, I've actually got two of just about every piece of ice in the deck. I do have three ice walls. 
Um, it's the only non agenda card that benefits from my tenant from tenant's ability. Sure. Um, I've got two Kamainu, um, two Inazuma. All right, we got a game finally. We got a two to two. <laughs> um, I've got two Quandry, two Lotus Fields. I've, I've got a pretty good selection of two of, so I'm. I'll be drawn into at least one piece of every kind of ice throughout the game. Oh, and two swordsmen, which I actually I really like swordsmen. It usually comes out right when I need it, and it's great at, at trashing an Atman um, or a, a Darwin or you know, a, lot, a lot of decks rely on those cards for breaking through centuries and the like. And swordsman is really good at getting rid of them. Oh, it still looks so bad. I mean, you've only got one ice, only the ice wall. Right, but it's a, it's a six strength ice wall, so it's going to cost him sure. five to break every time, and then he has to play a psi game. So mm. that works out pretty well in my favor. And what's the play here? I mean, I always feel like Parasite so good at getting rid of annoying ice walls that have, have six strength. Like, get that thing low. I mean, mm -hmm. that, you spend a lot of time building it up. Um, right. At, at the same time, open. at the same time, in Tenon, I I don't have any major qualms about just wiping viruses. Mm -hmm. um, if if my ice is strong and he can't get in, then I still benefit from that turn, even though I didn't do anything. You think we'll see a virus wipe here in the near future? Um, it's hard to say. I don't know that he actually ends up getting a strong data sucker pool open. I, oh, I just man, that he's probably out of R and D now forever. For, for that, the until he can get out, I think I think he's looking for a Crypsis now. I think that's all he can get into uh, oh. get past the Lotus Field with. At oh, least he's playing a Crypsis. He hit his he hit his mimic, so that's good. Uh, mm -hmm. So his, his rig is almost assembled. We don't have the Code Gatebreaker, but it's almost there. So I am running really low on cards right now. He's been doing a pretty good job, um, even though he hasn't been getting many accesses. He's still milled a lot of cards out of my deck. How? Oh. Um, I think I'm down to maybe even nine cards in R and D now. He just... Clone ship is interesting. Oh. So his influence is like a workshop, maybe two, and then like two clone ships, and then the three cash. That that seems about right. That's probably what I would do. Playing playing the full three workshop is is pretty hard. It's hard to justify it. Yeah. I know. Like, watching the workshop is just like, ah, oh, man. Ice Ops <laughs> is just so much better. And it's it's bad that, like, because this used to be a really popular deck for a while. Like, oh, yeah. A couple seasons ago. And then... It's cool, though, to revisit it and see kind of how it's, sh how it's changed and uh, whether it's actually kept up or not. Um, same what? thing with the uh, Atman Kate, which is still it seems fairly strong still. Um, still good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's the only new card I think in its entire deck is that cash. Oh. I think everything else it's is probably just kind trading of, out Gorman Drip. Yeah, I could see that. Which is a superior upgrade to the, the Gorman Drip superior card. Yeah. Um, Gorman Drip's pretty cool. No, it's though. a good card. I enjoyed in some siphon criminal decks. Some Siphon Anarch. Okay, so now he's making a demolition run on headquarters, which is actually pretty smart because I didn't. I, I thought about, didn't occur to me, but he's going to be able to trash my Chrysium and my Caprice for free if he if gets he, past if, Caprice. If, if, he, if he gets <laughs> if he gets in, so it's it's kind of a, a desperate gambit, but yeah, it's mm -hmm. still it could pay off pretty well. Demo run blows up cards you any number of cards you access and yep. any cards you access, and so that includes installed cards. Oh. oh, did he get it? He got uh, it. That looks did. like two. I'm pretty sure so. yeah, he spent he spent the money. So I do raise the Chrysium grid. Oh, so brutal! Yeah, hoses. Oh, brutal! It still it still triggers. It's not unsuccessful. It's uh, so demo run still still triggers. It just, oh, it just says, um, you may trash any cards you access, um, so it doesn't have any unsuccessful conditions. 
Oh, that's but good does, to know. But it does mean that my off the grid sticks around, and I'll still and I'll still get a tenant token if he doesn't um, if he doesn't make another run this turn. And he's out of money, so I think I get that tenant token. Interesting. Well, that's an interaction I hadn't thought of. Is that demo run actually gets by Crucium Grid? It's pretty cool. Oh, demo run let is when you access the cards, whereas singularity is when you don't. <laughs> okay. So yeah, singularity. I was to out, like, why would you play? Why would you ever want singularity? It's like, oh. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's a great thing, but singularity, you could access a triple advance card against personal evolution. And yeah, you don't. You just blow it up. You don't access. Yeah, you, you don't. So you don't have to worry about running it into an overrider um, or yeah. leaving a rodent on the table. So in that case, it, it's, it's just a safe bet. But it's a card slot that would be all but useless against most other decks. Yes, this is true. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it blows up Sand Sand. That's not nothing. But it costs, what, four to play a, a, dem, a, a Singularity? It, yeah, a it barely bo- barely blows up Sand Sand. You might as well so, just pen, pay the extra credit. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it's a double action as well. Yeah. So, so are you looking for more ice here? I'm running out of ca- running out of cards actually in my deck. Um, so the last turn I just spent making money because I was down to two credits. So right now I need money, but he needs money just as just as badly. Um, so my HQ is pretty safe. My R and D is still locked down tight. Um, and this one he's just running on. He makes a run in archives, and he hits a quandary. And he doesn't have any credits to pull that parasite off personal workshop. He is in a rough spot. <laughs> well, he he did find his uh, solution to quandary. Finally, that's good. Well, he also he he has parasite, and last turn, if he had one credit left over when he made the archives run, he could have put the parasite on quandary. You mean if he was it. running Order of Saul, he would have been able to parasite the quandary. <laughs> There we go. Now I think um, I think that's just the start of his turn. Personal workshop, man. If I was him, and it, I'm not, but I probably would have been uh, actively trying to like click for money. Uh, it, just being super poor with a Crypsis in your hand seems really difficult. Um, I guess you could solve that with uh, workshop, but I mean, right. you need that money. You need to be, you know, need to beat the other. Uh, Caprice, you know. I mean, he uh, did he, click for two credits and then deja vu. That's true. Right, but he only grabbed one cash. I'm gonna have grabbed both caches. He has he has, he has two caches in his. Um, oh yeah, just go for the mill win at this point. Mm-hmm. Or or even if it's just it's money, it's um, which is what he needs more than anything right now. Oh yeah, and that's right. He can't even shut off uh, Wild Side. I might have wanted that gone by now, right? I mean, yeah. Kind of the better part of uh, Aesop's is that when things get useless to you, just get rid of them and get some money for them. So. Okay, so uh, so last the last turn I scored out, or actually this turn I scored out an NAPD, and I install a double advance. A it's actually a future perfect out right now. Hmm. So this is the la- his last turn, um, and he probably knows it. He's got to go for a hail mary play here in some way. He's got to give it a shot. I think he's got to try to get into archives. Um, cause he, he, he still there, there are a ton of cards he hasn't seen in there. There, all he needs are five points. He has so. no money. Run archives three times. That's what you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, he has Run no money. Okay. Times. So, he, so he does have two cash. Two cash sitting on his personal workshop. But yeah, he's on his last click now. Yeah. And stall both. So, I know that there are at least two future perfects. Yeah, there they are in archives. So, there's three? No, there's two, because you have one out. Perfects and an NAPD. And an NAPD. Uh, so, n- nothing that he can score at all. But if he ran it three times, he'd force you to pay at least one for each each uh, future perfect not to lose, right? And it would keep you out of, yeah. And it would keep you out of range. scoring range, yeah. So, I think that had to have been the play here. Um, I'm not sure. It looked like I mean, he installed the caches. Yeah, that's what he did. Right. Uh, that's brutal. Oh, good games. Um, so, looking at uh, Chrisium Grid off the grid, how do you feel about it? 
it's it's so much influence, and that that's what was killing me is especially Jinteki has it has some good ice, but it, you really want to grab from, from out of faction to supplement it. Um, especially since so, so much of Jinteki's ice is really susceptible to parasite, Komainu, Tsurugi. Um, all the ice that costs a lot of money to get through, but it's really easy to trash. Hmm. And then it's, all, it's almost kind of the same thing on the Wayland side. It, with Off the Grid and Chris, you, you, you really want Caprice. You really want to make that HQ as strong as possible. But Caprice is for influence piece. So either either way, if you're running three Caprice, three Chris, even three off the grid, it's going to be 12 of your, of your influence in other faction. I guess that's true. Could you just cut one of the off the grids and play like some other ice? Would that it, be... It, it's, it, it's possible. Not not in, in Tenon, you, you it wouldn't be great. Um, in Tenon, it, mm. without off the grid, you really just can't score your agendas. Interesting. And off the grid, like this Chrysium off the grid thing is just it's a lot of moving pieces for like not the most potent effect. Like it's it's a huge setup and time investment. Yeah. Well, that's what Tendon does anyway, though. I mean, it just has it's a big setup, and then usually Trick of Lights things out. But I mean, what he should have also been doing is like just like because you hadn't resed your off the grid yet, you could just force him to like force you to res it, so it would like bankrupt you. It's six to res. It's expensive. That's true. That's very true. Well, um, I, I only put it down once I had once I had enough money to res it. But like, you have to res it. Before he declares running on that server, so right. Right. Yes, that's right. And so that's why I don't even install it until I, I have more, enough credits to res it and still keep my server secure. All right. Yeah. It, it's, so, it's tricky. So is I'm, it too? I'm, is it too tricky? I mean, is, that's the question right now. Is it too much of a trick and not enough of a a, pl- a practical? Well, like in tool? that last game, it like there was the off the grid wasn't even resed when you were trying to score out there. No, no, off the grid was rest. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it was rest the second it hit the table. Um, oh, okay. I think yeah, I, yeah. I, I even installed it and res it before I put anything else on it. Um, I see that I was running, running out, of, out of card space in my hand, and I wanted to be able to install efficiently next, the following turn. Yeah. Um, if, if, if I were to continue playing with off the grid and Chrysium, I think I'd go into HB, and I'd run... Um, I'd probably just run an asset-heavy HB deck with lots of encryption protocols. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to make those Chrysiums incredibly taxing to trash. Hmm. Sounds like a project. <laughs> it, 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 will, it will not be a great deck, but it will be fun. Right on, guys. Uh, well, uh, I think that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, thanks for joining us, Stephen. All right. And Nick. Have a good one. See you guys later. Been a pleasure.